The approvals feature allows account admins to set up approvers with the ability to approve or deny submissions. When an end user submits a form, the approvers will be notified via email so they can review the submission and approve, deny, or add notes for their team regarding the status of the submission. In order to use this feature, you must be on a team plan or higher. For additional information on adding this feature to your account, we'd recommend getting in touch with your account manager. Let's take a look at what's involved in enabling approvals for your form. To enable approvals, you need to first click on the form that you'll be using and then navigate to the settings tab of your form. From here, you'll see an approvals tab on the left-hand side that you'll wanna click on. On this page, you can add the first approver for your form by entering in their email address. If the approver is already a user on the account, their account email will pre-populate as you are typing. If this user is not on the account, we would recommend adding this user first to make things a bit easier. You may add as many approvers as you'd like to the form and you may remove them at any point in time. An approver must be a user on your account and you can only add the total number of approvers based on the number of users you have with your specific plan. We'd recommend getting in touch with your account manager if you need to add more. It's important to note that if a new user account is created while being added to the approval list, you may want to edit their permissions. By default, the new user will be given view only access to the submissions of the form associated with the approvals. As a reminder, you can edit the user permissions from the settings tab here on the right. If an approver is added to a form and later removed or deleted, then the approval data and comments from that approver will also be removed from the submissions tab. Please keep this in mind before deleting or editing your form approvers. If you have a use case where you might be removing and adding approvers quite often, we'd recommend checking out our workflows add-on and getting in touch with your account manager for more information. When an approver has been added to a form, you may also include logic for that approver that dictates under which circumstances they will be required to approve submissions. For example, you may only need a user to approve submissions if certain fields are selected or answered in a particular way. Fields eligible for approver logic include select lists, checkboxes, number or radio button fields. Let's say we have an approver that only needs to be included in the approval process if the form was submitted to the sales department. Let's go ahead and click the add approver logic option and then set our condition. Multiple logic rules can be added for a user by clicking the green plus symbol next to each logic line to add more if needed. It's important to note when adding multiple approvers to your form that in order for a submission to be marked as approved, every approver must individually approve the submission. It's also important to note that you can add an additional step when creating your approvals process for your form. Let's say you have a group of people who might be reviewing this form if the sales department was selected, and then we have a second step when we have a group for our HR department. As a reminder, the approval process would go in order of first to last step if this is the route that you'd like to take. Moving to our next section at the bottom of the page, we have our email settings. Let's take a look at all of the options here. Starting from the top, you have the option to choose if you'd like to include the data that gets sent out to the approvers, as well as the ability to approve or deny submission from the email itself. The other option to the right of this is making it mandatory for each approver to log in in order to view the submission data and approve or deny. Below this, you have the option to customize and set up your approval, denial, and notification messages. For your form submitters, let's take a quick look at what setting up an approval message could look like. You will see a lot of the same settings across all of these messages, with the difference being that notification messages will require you to define an email that will receive the notifications for when a submission is approved. 
Clicking on the setting up approval message option will present you with some next steps for customization. On this page, you can name your rule, customize the subject line of this message, and choose if you'd like to include the full set of data for the content or a custom message where you could insert specific field data that's relevant to your form submitter. At the bottom of this page, you'll also see the option to set email logic for if you'd like to send out a custom message, depending on how the submission was entered. Once you are finished, you can hit save at the bottom of the box. Taking a quick look at our notification message setup, you'll notice a few additional options like needing to designate who the email goes to and the option to include a link to the saved data in the submission. Now that we've taken a look at the basics of setting up approvals on your form, let's take a look at what viewing submissions is like as a user. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a new form for this example and navigate to the submission section that can be found on the top right. After you've added approvals to your form, there will be a new column under your submissions called approval status. This column will show you which submissions have been approved or denied. As an admin, it's possible to approve or deny from this page by clicking the appropriate button, but it's also possible to approve or deny a batch of submissions on this page by clicking all the submissions that you'd like to make changes on and then click the mark as option and then choose whether you'd like for these to be approved or denied. When viewing an individual submission, you can view additional details on the approval status as well as any notes relating to the submission or status that may have been left by members of your team. If you'd like, you can also add a note without having to change the status of the submission. It's also worth mentioning that if you set up a form with multiple approvers and you have a situation where you'd like to skip an approver, you could do this by going to the individual submission that's still in flux and clicking the edit icon next to the approver that you would like to skip and then choosing the skip option to remove them as an approver from that individual submission. It's also worth mentioning that forms activated with approvals will have some added submission reports relating to the approval status. When you open your submission reports, you will see some predefined reports for things like submissions that were approved or denied and ones that are specific to your user. That's it on our video for setting up approvals for the first time Thank you so much for watching.